Welcome to Darkwood Brew, a convergence point online and offline where people of faith and other spiritual seekers gather to find community and companionship as well as encouragement and inspiration on their walk through life's dark wood. In this series, we're exploring the lives of individuals who have discovered their path in life not through glorious successes, but through struggle, even failure. One of the things that few people appreciate about the Christian faith, as much as I do, is that it doesn't teach a right way of belief so much as a right way to fail. Far from handing us a set of religious doctrines and dogmas that supposedly lead to perfection and success, following the path of Jesus will likely get you into more trouble and confront you with greater difficulties than you would ever encounter on your own. Tonight's guest, HR executive and diversity trainer Marsha Bonner, is no exception. When Marsha first appeared on ABC television's What Would You Do, social media outlets around the world lit up as people eagerly shared video from Mar of Marsha reacting with nothing short of amazing grace and compassion toward a hairdresser making racist remarks. Where did Marsha's infectious spirit come from? And how can we grow a little of that in ourselves? Tonight's answer may surprise you as we explore the call to embrace failure. But before we go any further, let's take a look at what's happened so far in our series. I need you to go with me. We don't want the certain answer, but if we had a sense that there were going to be some plot twists along the way, I think we actually find those plot twists to be deeply satisfying. Your life can be larger than this, and don't limit yourself to what you think traditional roles are. Dream the dream that's for you. It's not for anybody else, it's for you. The improvisational nature was so much like the Spirit of God working in us. What makes wine magical, in your opinion? That I cannot tell you, and therefore it was magic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in response to tonight's uh, theme, the call to embrace failure, we thought we'd pack this episode with as much failure as humanly possible. Speaking of which, let's go to Tracy Halverson as she, <laughs> as she reads tonight's NUMA uh, passage. Uh, if you're just joining us for the first time, we, uh, we take a look at a passage from Scripture uh, up front of the episode, talk about it a bit, and then we cover that also later on during the meditative portion of our program. Let's hear uh, Tracy Halverson reading uh, from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter seven, verses four, uh, seven, chapter seven, verse fourteen, through chapter eight, verse six, according to the Message version. I can anticipate the response that's coming. I know that all God's commands are spiritual, but I'm not. Isn't this also your experience? Yes. I'm full of myself. After all, I've spent a long time in sin's prison. What I don't understand about myself is that I decide one way, but then I act another, doing things that I absolutely despise. 
So if I can't be trusted to figure out what's best for myself and then do it, it becomes obvious that God's command is necessary. But I need something more. For if I know the law but still can't keep it, and if the power of sin within me keeps sabotaging my best intentions, I obviously need help. I realize that I don't have what it takes. I can will it, but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. Something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. It happens so regularly that it's predictable. The moment I decide to do good, sin is there to trip me up. I truly delight in God's commands, but it's pretty obvious that not all of me joins in that delight. Parts of me covertly rebel, and just when I least expect it, they take charge. I've tried everything and nothing helps. I'm at the end of my rope. Is there no one who can do anything for me? Isn't that the real question? The answer, thank God, is that Jesus Christ can and does. He acted to set things right in this life of contradictions where I want to serve God with all of my heart and mind, but I'm pulled by the influence of sin to do something totally different. With the arrival of Jesus, the Messiah, that fateful dilemma is resolved. Those who enter into Christ being here for us no longer have to live under a continuous low-lying black cloud. A new power is in operation. The spirit of life in Christ, like a strong wind, has magnificently cleaned the air, freeing you from a faded lifetime of brutal tyranny at the hands of sin and death. God went for the jugular when God sent God's own son God didn't deal with the problem as something remote and unimportant. In God's Son, Jesus, God personally took on the human condition, entered the disordered mess of struggling humanity in order to set it right once and for all. The law code, weakened as it always was by fractured human nature, could never have done that. The law always ended up being used as a band-aid on sin instead of a deep healing in it. And now what the law code asked for but we couldn't deliver is accomplished as we, instead of redoubling our own efforts, simply embrace what the Spirit is doing in us. Those who think they can do it on their own end up obsessed with measuring their own moral muscle but never get around to exercising it in real life. Those who trust God's action in them find that God's Spirit is in them, living and breathing God. Obsession with self in those matters is a dead end. Attention to God leads us out into the open, into a spacious, free life. This morning, uh, someone who was aware of uh, tonight's theme was telling me that she had uh, once asked a person who she thought had exceptionally good judgment how uh, he made good decisions. His response was, well, you need experience. She asked, well, how do you get experience? He responded, you make some bad decisions. <laughs> and, uh, you know, several years ago, I was actually surprised when I made a list of my own uh, kind of life journey and some of the, uh, uh, the areas that, that really most bring me fully alive in the world, some of the, 
the quote unquote successes that I've been most proud of also. And, and I noticed there was a unifying theme to, to almost all of them, which was that they were all, uh, I got into doing all of them based on some or in response to some form of failure either a personal failure on my part or a failure on the part of others that impacted my life in ways that I couldn't control. But whether it was my failure or that of others, <clears throat> each time it, they moved me into discovering something about myself that I hadn't quite caught on to before and, uh, and moved me into an area of life that was really more enlivening than it had been uh, before. You know, Paul. The Apostle Paul makes a, a similar uh, observation. You know, of all the people who, who, who really, if, if Christian faith was about success, if, if Christian faith were about kind of finding a way of getting on, on top of the world so the world could no longer hurt you and you could no longer hurt the world, Paul would be the one to have achieved that, that success, that perfection. I mean, of all the people in the Bible, perhaps maybe of all the people who have ever lived, uh, no one who has, uh, no one seems to have embraced the Christian faith more fervently than Paul, more, with more dedication than Paul. Um, one of the reasons why he was accepted uh, into the synagogues in so many places to, to speak for them uh, around, around the Orient, ancient Orient, was because he could out-rabbi the rabbis. And one of the reasons why he could uh, influence so much of the early Christian faith was because he could out-Christian uh, the, the Christians. No, Paul, uh, really, if, if there was a, an ability to find perfection through the Christian path, Paul would have found it. And yet, you just heard this awkward confession Paul makes, basically saying, listen, folks, I can't seem to do anything right. And just when I try, I find I'm slipping up again. Yeah. Paul? Well, obviously, if, if this was coming from Paul, then the Christian faith uh, which turned him on, which, which gave him great joy in life, actually. So much joy that he could be beaten down at place to place, left for dead in places even. He'd get up and, and, and become more joyful again, preaching the gospel of good news. Uh, this Paul, uh, Christian, Christian faith must be about something different than success. And in fact, the faith, as we examine it in the life of Jesus, is, is really not about perfection. It's about transformation. It's about becoming a new creation, which has very little to do with our perfection. In fact, transformation and becoming a new creation, the clearest route to it seems to be through the heart of our failures, not skirting around them. And yet so many people follow a Christian faith that they feel will lead them to success. When they discover it doesn't, uh, there are generally two responses. There are some who internalize the problem, saying, well, I must be uniquely flawed. I must be incapable of following this Christian journey. They blame themselves for the, for the fact that they can't find the perfection that they thought Christianity was offering. Others uh, don't internalize the problem, they externalize it. Uh, they blame their churches or their ministers for, for faulty advertising, for a faulty message that hasn't hasn't yielded the results they were expecting. Either that or they have a, an awakening which convinces them that uh, Christian faith perhaps uh, was faulty from the start or at least terribly outdated for our day. Now, uh, when this happens, people oftentimes turn then to other paths. Uh, they, they enroll their children in, in soccer rather than Sunday school take their kids to chess class rather than confirmation, uh, get the, their teenagers involved in every kind of extracurricular activity they could possibly find that will fill their days uh, besides faith development, uh, hoping that to get them into a good college that will get them then a good job, which will attract a good spouse, which will allow them to buy a good house and a good car and have that good life uh, until it doesn't. Now, when it comes to perfection and finding success, Christianity uh, may have nothing to say about it. Uh, but uh, the path of secularism has less than nothing. You know, who among us would, would actually say that, that, that our economy or our lives or our jobs or our families or our marriages would be better if more people simply turned their backs on God or more person, people decided they wouldn't 
uh, submit to any higher authority than their own egos, that they would rather turn away from serving uh, God's realm and build their own private empires. Would life really be improved? Now, what is the purpose of Christian faith, then, if not to ensure our success and lead us to greater and greater states of perfection? Well, perhaps we'll find a f few clues in, uh, with tonight's guest, Marsha Bonner. For those of you who uh, didn't see the opening video at the front of this episode, let's just recap a few seconds of her appearance, her surprising appearance on the ABC television show, What Would You Do? Hey, baby. Wait, what? You with a white girl? Yeah, that's my girlfriend. You couldn't find a strong black woman for you? Excuse me? She wants Rachel to apologize to Kristen. Yes, you should, while it's still on your spirit, so that you can sleep better tonight. Trust me. Trust me. And yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come here. That's what works for us. Hugs, helping us grow spiritually. Hi. Beautiful. Well, Marsha, it's great to have you uh, on tonight, uh, tonight's episode. Welcome to Darkwood Brew. Thank you, Eric. Thank you for having me um, on tonight. Uh, it's really a privilege and an honor. I was uh, uh, showing that, that clip, uh, the, the full clip this morning to, to two worship services at Countryside uh, Community Church, and I think about half the congregation was pulling out their Kleenexes, <laughs> just was so inspired by uh, just that radiance that just, just exudes from you, and obviously in a spontaneous uh, act that, where you just can't plan a response, you just kind of act from your core. I think that's what really touched people, is that uh, it seemed... I mean, seem to be come right out of just who who you are uh, can you tell us a little bit about about that uh, that experience in the barbershop well um there's um gosh i don't even know where to begin sometime when i'm watching the video myself i i can't um i i get my arms around exactly what was happening in the moment and i try to re reflect and that's almost impossible because i i live in the moment um, and the first thing I want to say is I was just having a conversation and the fact that it was being filmed and, and videotaped came as a complete surprise to me. Um, you know, Eric, sharing and, and giving is something that, um, that I've just always done. So in having this particular conversation, um, I didn't really feel like I was doing anything special. And what has transpired um, as a result of the conversation um, totally amazes me, and and I'm and I'm so I'm pleased, I'm blessed, and I'm grateful that so many people have um, have been touched by the video. But more importantly, that they've been touched by the video for different reasons in their lives. Mm. Um, that that's what I find most fascinating about the message that was delivered. It's not the video, it, it's the message in the video. Um, and I and I and I'm and I'm just glad that I was the vessel that was used that day in Harlem, you know, in a barbershop. I mean, who well, I wasn't going to say who does that, but I'm real clear about who does that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, so, so you can, so you can pick it up from there, Eric. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> you know, one of the things that uh, uh, you, you, uh, as you came and gave that that uh, hairdresser a hug, um, you then you, you kind of pulled out this acronym, hugs, helping us grow spiritually. Where did that come from? <sighs> It came from the, um, and, and I'll use this term, um, I'll use God, I'll use the, um, the God that I honor, and I'll use spirit, because we all um, approach um, the God that we honor in different ways, and, you know, I respect all people for however they choose to do that. Um, but in relation to the acronym itself, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, um, it's simply was something that um, that I'm comfortable doing, 
hugging, but the term itself just came out. Now, you know, it, it would be real easy. It would it, it, it would be great if I say, oh, Eric, that's something that I say all the time. I walk the street talking about helping us grow spiritually. And I tell you, my brother, that is not the case. Um, that is the first time that I had ever used that term um, from, from my lips to someone else. Hmm. I say a lot of things for the first time on front of a camera too, but I but I'm not necessarily as proud of them as. as, <laughs> as, as <that. laughs> okay, let, let's keep it clean, Eric. Let's keep it clean. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> you must have a, seen episodes before. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've watched everything you've done in preparation for this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> anything you want to ask me about? <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> epic fail, I'm being killed uh, on the part of the host, yeah. No, uh, so a lot of people, when they see this, this video, they see this, uh, this person who, you know, their, their heart just shines out. It's, it's obvious it just comes, just so, it's just part of who you are. You just can't make that up. It's just part of who you are. So they see this, this person with a lot of good you know, inner beauty. They also see a person who is a successful HR executive, and they kind of think, well, you know, it's kind of tempting to say, oh, Marsha Bonner, well, she's, she has achieved that elusive success, that, that path that, that will put us, you know, keep us you know, safe and never fall on our face and so forth. Um, is, that, is, is that where you're at? Um, actually, um, we're, we're never where we, where we think we, um, we are from a professional standpoint. And what I mean by that, let me be clear. Um, yes, I am an HR professional. Yes, um, a focus, a lot of the focus um, for my career has been on diversity and inclusion um, for a lot of reasons. Um, you know, I'm an African American, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a gay woman, um, and for, for those reasons, and I'm a woman, you know, for, so for those reasons alone, I used to tell my boss, I check a lot of boxes. Um, and she, she <laughs> and, and we used to find humor in that. So so let me just say that that my profession doesn't dictate the person that I am. What it did, um, Eric, was allow me the opportunity to help those like myself in the workplace. Hmm. Um, I spend um, a lot of time dealing with employee relations issues. Um, organizational development, strategic planning. See, the HR profession has many different um, different disciplines, um, training and development. So I, I've been able to bring all of those disciplines together to become a well-rounded HR professional with diversity as an area of particular interest and focus for me. So um, no, it, 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 it helped me to solidify and, and, and do the work that I do as a human being, mm -hmm. and I say work that I do, I maybe shouldn't say that, live the life that I love. That's mm -hmm. more apropos. Yeah. Well, obviously, um, and, and as a diversity trainer, so you have you know, some good information that, that you know, floating around inside that, that head uh, of yours, uh, but what really comes out in the video, too, is it's just, the, just the sheer compassion, the empathy, the degree of empathy that you displayed uh, for someone who was in your in your perception <laughs> you didn't know it was staged you know was was really uh, offering a lot of uh, harsh bigotry um, where does that empathy come from um, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that um, through my own life experiences um, I've had individuals reach out to me in the same way. So let me set the let me set the stage for you here a little bit, Eric. Um, what I've come to understand when people have discriminatory thoughts or biases or prejudices, that something is going on inside of them that has nothing to do with the person that they're reflecting this um, negative behavior on. That 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 that's my first point of reference. So when when you watch the video, you'll see my my the first statement that I make is what? Right. Okay, because that that's my moment of pause. That, that's my moment of pause, and I treasure my moment of pause because it gives me an opportunity to think about what I'm going to do or say next. Just, just take a minute. Um, so the point that I'm making or, or, or leading to is that in my life, um, I have not had that, um, that, that um, successful life. I've gone through quite a bit of trials and, and tribulations 
um, that, that I'm sure you're sure we'll speak about going forward. And as a result of that, there's something inside of me that wants to reach out and help people to get closer to really what's going on with them. You know, because you, you can't you can't be better unless you are better. You know, unless unless your spirit is feeling better, unless you're you're healthy, you're, you're healthy mentally, unless you're healthy physically. So a lot of times you, you just need to take a moment to 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 understand rather than be understood. And that's that's what I was trying to do um, in, in that in that moment. Like what's really going on with this young lady that she feels that it's OK to speak so harshly and, and so disrespectfully to another human being that she knew nothing about. Hmm. Yeah. So um, you mentioned you kind of you had to searching then inside yourself and your own life, life path, your own struggles. And was there something about your earlier struggles then that to help you understand, maybe or empathize with what was going on within her? Yeah, um, I'll, I'll try to tie it as best as I can because I think it's it's important. So let me state state this: um, I am I am a uh, I am I'm a recovering um, addict. Mm -hmm. That's that's the first thing. I have been clean now, Eric, for 25 years. That's wonderful. Thank you, sir. I appreciate you saying that. As a result of the fellowship that I am a member of, um, there are certain um, principles that we follow in our lives. So for 25 years, I have been doing my best to be a better person. Let's hit the rewind button. You know, so the rewind button is simply this. Um, I have used and abused drugs and alcohol um, for many, many years. Um, I was uh, a derelict. Um, I um, was off and on living, living in off and on in the street. Um, I did not have a home address. I did not. I did not have what normal people had. I was living um, from from pantry to pantry. <laughs> And um, yeah, that, that, that's an art. You got to you got to get a sheet and everything. It's 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 not an easy thing to do. <laughs> Most people uh, think living paycheck to paycheck is hard. Pantry to pantry is a lot pantry harder. To pantry is even harder. And I and I don't say that to to minimize the struggle. What I, I, I say it because it's important for people to understand that there are people like that who are struggling. And, and at that time in my life, Eric, I couldn't find um, my way out for, for a lot of different reasons. And I'm, I'm happy to, to share a little bit more about them. But the, but the, the, the point that you're, you're bringing up, the empathy part, where does that come from? At some point, um, there was divine intervention. That's what I call it. And I was um, allowed by his, his grace and his mercy to go into a treatment facility. And I was in a treatment facility for, um, for about two years, Eric. Now, understand something. Um, a lot of, of <laughs> I'm throwing this in almost as a disclaimer, but a lot of my, my business professionals and, and individuals that I've worked with over the years have no idea that, that I've been in recovery. They, they, this, is, this is the first, really the first time that I'm sharing it so openly. I, I did once before. But there's, there's, a, there's, there's something that needs to be said in relation to this. It's not that I'm, I'm a recovering addict. It's, it's that I'm, I'm, a, I'm a human being who has learned to love herself enough so that I can, so that I can give love to other people. Um, through the principles that I follow, through the life that, that I have that has been designed for me. You know, I would love to take credit for it, but that's not what has happened, Eric. This 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 was already happening long before that young lady and I took that hug in that barbershop and over 22 million people have been touched by what happened. This this had been pre-planned long ago. So, you know, I was thinking about your call to embrace failure. I embrace it with both hands, both feet, both everything that I am because it's 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 de it's the desperation, you know, the the the, the degradation, the, the dereliction, all of that is in me. I know what it looks like, sounds like, feels like, smells like. I know what it is to 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 to, to live on bonton potato chips and 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 juices. 
25 cent juices. I don't know if you have them where you are, but they're a big thing here in New York um, when, when, when you're trying to get something to eat. So, so I know what that is. So when, when I see someone who's in pain, because that's what I saw in that, in that young woman, she was in pain. I just wanted to reach out and let her know, you're not alone. That's the first thing that, that, that we need to let people know. Mm. That they're not alone. Mm. And that the road that you're traveling, I'm on it with you. Mm. That yeah. I'm on it with you. Yeah, that's what it's about. So that's where the empathy comes from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds like it's, it's uh, not alone and, and loved. Love beyond Very, what we can know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, and I know that I'm loved. Um, you could not come from where I've come from, Eric, and not know a couple of things. Um, I think I shared with you in one of our previous conversations that I know who I am, and I know whose I am, and I'm real good with that. Um, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and, I, and I like the way that feels on me. I like the way it allows me to, to talk to people, to be comfortable in my own skin and allow them, more importantly, Eric, to be comfortable in their skin when they're in my company. Yeah. You sound a lot to me like a modern day Paul, actually. Uh, <laughs> that passage that we've been uh, covering uh, this evening, it, it really, uh, you know, Paul is saying, listen, you know, I've, I've got some failures to, <laughs> to my credit, uh, but it's, it's not about what I have done. It's what's about what God is doing in me. It's about what the Spirit is doing within me that gets me so excited. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm extremely excited about my life right now. Um, well, first of all, you know, I, I let people know I was, I was good already. You know, and, and now I've, I've got over 22 million friends um, who, 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 who want to who wanna be a part of my life. That's, that's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, and many, many of them are, are from, you know, countries that, that I had never even thought that I would have friends in, you know, Thai, Taiwan, um, China, you know, you know um, um, the Netherlands, Turkey. I mean, I've, I've gotten responses to the message in the video from, from all over the world. And that only tells me one thing, which I'm sure you're very aware of yourself, Eric, that people are in search of and in need of something to help them feel better about who they are, in this world that we live in and and what's their purpose and 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 how do they get there and 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 all of those questions that continue to to surround us in our everyday lives the funny thing about trying to answer those questions is that if you just in my humble opinion if you if you just do what it is in your heart to do you're closer than you think mm. Yeah, it is something, isn't it? Once we kind of wake up to that, how, how close we actually are all the time, even though when we feel the most distance and how when there is that awakening, we discover that there's been this, this, this thing that's been knocking at our door for well beyond we were, uh, well before we were ever even aware of it. Absolutely. Well, Marcia, what's been knocking at the door too is a lot of, uh, we've been stirring up a lot of uh, questions and comments and excitement on, <laughs> on the chat and also in the coffee house here. Uh, <laughs> Tracy has a, a, a question or a comment uh, she'd like to uh, field here. Sure. Yeah, uh, Marcia, there's been some uh, discussion as well as some, some uh, um, reflection on what you've been sharing with us. And um, part of what came out of that discussion here in, in the coffee house itself um, is a, a question for you. What precipitated your change of life and your change of heart from a self-absorbed life to a self-realized life? Um, that's an excellent question, and I'm, and I'm glad I have an opportunity to um, respond to it. Um, the first thing that I had to realize is that I was not God. Um, that, that was the awakening for me that changed my life. Um, being self-obsessed, self-absorbed, and self-centered, that whole self-package um, um, allowed me to think um, that whenever I was in a situation that was life-threatening, when I came out of it, I did that. God, I'm good. You know, oh man, you know, I dodged that bullet. God, I'm good. You know, um, and, 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 you know, it, 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 what, 
what an arrogant state of being. That's that's the first thing. So the transformation was that, um, and I call it a transformation. We can change. I applaud all those who do. But when you transform and you allow your life to be to be open to something greater than yourself, it is a phenomenal state of being. So I'm living a phenomenal life right now. Um, and that 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 is what happened. I stopped being God and I allowed the God of my understanding to do what he had planned all along. I just took the long road to get here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you want one thing that really uh, stood out for me in it. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm, you know, I, this is this is look, Eric, you invited Marsha. This is what you got. Oh, man. yeah. Hey, <laughs> you came in and got me. This is what you got. I, I feel sorry for you. Uh, but uh, no, one thing that really stood out for me in our conversation before the program, too, is just how um, you never uh you say you never forget how you felt like back at your lowest moment that 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 actually provides this uh, this amazing range of empathetic feelings for others who are in that in that same state uh, or similar uh, states that, that you, you never f- forget how you felt back then it's 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 um wow that's an excellent point um we we have a we have a phrase in in the um in the fellowship that um that I'm a member of and it goes simply those who don't remember are doomed hmm. are doomed to repeat right okay. so those who don't remember are doomed to repeat um so i keep up front for myself every day every day not that not that i live it every day don't don't get me wrong i keep it up front that there but for the grace of god go i and and whenever i see somebody that's less fortunate than myself there but for the grace of God go I, point number one, point number two, how can I make their life just a little bit better? Just, just a little bit better. Can I, can I say that I love you? Can I just look at them and say that? Can I look across at them and give them a smile, Eric? Get, that, that sometime what all, that, that's all people need. Can I, can I nod? Can I, can I nod? And, and, and so that they know that someone recognizes their existence on this earth. Mm. That, that, that's, that's all that we can do sometime. Um, so yeah, um, I, will, I will never forget. Mm. I will never forget what it, what it was like to live in a, to live in a crack house. I'm, I'm gonna be a little blunt here. I will never forget what it was like to have um, experiences that put me in life-threatening situations. I will never forget the fact that I was bought out of that for a reason. Mm. Well, Marsha, you have definitely uh, uh, been a part of the grace of God for us uh, this evening. We really appreciate you coming on. It just uh, gives me great joy to think about uh, the lucky people for whom uh, are the recipients also of your professional life. It, you are in human resources, and you, it sounds like you treat every human being as a true resource. And, and a blessing, and uh, we appreciate your opening a little bit of your life and uh, some of the, 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 the beauty, beauty and also the, the, the embraces of failures in the past. Um, and they, they certainly will uh, be much for us to think about and pray about and give thanks for. Uh, Absolutely. Evening. Thanks. Absolutely. And uh, um, it's if, a, it's if people a, want a, to, uh, to connect with you, you uh, actually, as a result of that program, I think, uh, and all the attention that gave to it, you've actually started a, a, an organization called Hugs. Maybe we should, can end on that point. I wanted to allow you to oh, let thank people you. join thank up you. with that if they'd like. Yeah, thank you for giving me a little uh, a little opportunity to talk about that. Um, first of all, it's evolving. What it's called is, um, is the Hugs Movement. I've started a Facebook page called Hugs Movement, helping us grow spiritually. Um, at this point, time working with a with a team of folks who have put their loving arms around me um, we are developing um, programming um, we're actually going to have a hugs day in Harlem um, I do pro bono work with an organization called cutting for a cure it provides health care resources information and guidance through the barbershop 
Um, so it's a it's a unique idea and a unique collaboration that has been working. So um, I'm working as the project manager on um, facilitating that marathon. It's a 48 hour hair cutting marathon, and on July 12th, um, it's July 11th, 12th, and 13th. Long story short, on July 12th, we will have a Hugs Day. I'm going to invite people to join the Hugs Day um, by um, taking a sign and saying that they support the Hugs Day. You know, the, just just a little something so that people can feel connected to what's going to be going on here in Harlem. And really, Eric, that that's really what the Hugs Movement is all about, um, encouraging people to um, take those little acts of kindness and, and, and make them a lifestyle. You know, I call it have a have a hugs mindset, yeah. you know, um, inspire, uplift and encourage others through our words, our actions and our deeds. Um, I think I think there was a there was a guy. Um, I believe his name was, um, I don't know, Jesus Christ. Um, <laughs> I've I, heard of him uh, someplace. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he wrote a he, book. He, didn't he, 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 yeah, he, he, he kind of lived like that, or, you know, <laughs> and um, I will I will never um, it never is a, is a big word, but but I aspire to be the best person that I can be in in in, in his honor. Mm. Amen. Just just in his honor. And and Jesus, God, the spirit that you are. I want to be very clear. Um, whatever guides you, um, let them guide you to the place that that is best suited for for you in giving to someone else. That's right. what it's about. Amen. Well Marsha, I got just got one thing to give you. What's that? <laughs> okay. uh, thank you. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if, and if you think I didn't feel that, you're sadly mistaken. I got the whole Eric on me. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Thank well, you so much. It's thank been you an for honor joining and us. And a privilege, sir. And vice versa. Thank you very much, Marcia. We'll look forward to tra tracing the uh, tracking the hugs movement. <laughs> Stay attention. You know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, Hugs Movement, we're there. Okay. And we'd love to have as many people on board as, as we can get as the as the movement evolves. Um, it's right. going to happen. It's already been it's already been said. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Marsha. Thank you, Eric. God bless. You too. Well, we, we spent a little extra time with Marsha this evening. We thought it might just be worth it. <laughs> I, think, I think you'd agree that it was. Uh, before the band uh, transitions into the musical feature, and we transition to the second half of the, the program where we uh, take a more meditative approach to that scripture and to what we've been hearing, I just want to invite you to uh, gather some communion elements. If you'd care to join us at the end of the episode for communion, we always extend a, a warm invitation to you. If you have bread and wine or juice and crackers at home or some other elements you'd like to join us with. And also note that uh, if you'd like an extended experience of uh, the prayer and meditation that we do um, in a little different form, uh, we invite you to come back on Wednesday nights during Lent. Uh, actually, we just have one more uh, during Lent uh, at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern called Spirit Lab. You can reach it uh, right through the Darkwood Brew page. We'll be doing it once again uh, this, this coming Wednesday and, uh, and then we'll be taking a break during Holy Week and we'll come back one more time uh, with the Bob Ravenscroft uh, Inner, Gener Inner Journeys Trio. Uh, they'll be actually physically present with us here in Omaha. You saw them as guests a couple weeks ago on Darkwood Brew. So join us for that. Um, and of course, we always appreciate it when you uh, donate to help keep Darkwood Brew um, streaming out to you. So if you wouldn't mind after the episode uh, or during it, hit that button. Just don't do that during the prayer time, please. But <laughs> uh, hit that button and uh, we really appreciate your support. Matt, who do we have with us this evening? Well, we've got a, a nice little crew. We're going to feature Ron Cooley's music. Um, the feature tune is called Samba These Days. Ron Cooley on guitar. Bobo Bennett on the drums. Ricky Williams, the third. 
on the bass, here comes Samba These Days.
<laughs> you got them all 